Hey, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing, Magic, and Mysticism. And today I'm going to be talking about the subject of Ho'oponopono. In case you don't know what that is, um, basically it is a powerful Hawaiian spiritual intervention that's used as a cleansing tool. Um, I'm going to sh kind of give an introduction to it on this venue on YouTube. And then if you want more extensive um, instructions and applications, I'm going to put the second video on my Patreon for my um, Inner Circle members and those who are, you know, supporting um, this channel. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is Ho'oponopono? So it's a basically a Hawaiian healing system that literally means to rectify or to make right. Um, basically, errors arise from thoughts tainted by painful memories, and not just personal memories from your past, but also collectively for our species and um, ancestral memories and things like that. So this is a very um, metaphysical um, belief system. And what you're doing is you're letting go of toxic energies uh, to allow um, the energy of the divine to go to f go forth, cleanse, and um, you know work on those memories. So, Ho'oponopono originally expressed itself, or at least as under as understand it, as a form of problem solving and mediation between parties. Um, so, there's a family problem. Everybody gets together. The mediator um, helps everyone kind of talk it out. And in the end, um, there is some repentance, um, asking for forgiveness, and uh, that is seen as resolving everything psychologically and spiritually, emotionally. Um, now, this particular style of Ho'oponopono is uh, self-identity Ho'opono taught by um, a kahuna named Morna, who taught Yu Lin, uh, who is the, um, I guess the one who promotes the self-identity Ho'opono. It's the style that I've read the most about, that I've been trained in, so um, it is the one that I'm presenting to you. Um, so what exactly is this? So the basic metaphysical assumption, and I'm going to break this down for you, is that we are 100% responsible for everything that happens to us. Um, and so let me give you the caveats for that, because I can already feel people saying, well, I'm not responsible for what they did. They did what they did was wrong, and that affected me, and so on and so forth. So psychologically, and in, um, I guess in the mundane world, that is true. Someone does something, says something, and it affects us. And um, um, ultimately, on that level, you know, everybody owns what they do. They talk about it, and uh, they try to move on and not make that mistake again. So what Ho'oponopono, uh, through self-identity, says is that, and also I want to break this down in a way too, is that there's a difference between being responsible for something and responsible to something. So you may not be responsible for what happened to you, but a lot of times we have to be responsible to ourselves in the situation in order to resolve it. So that is closer to the 100% responsibility. Um, the assumption that you're 100% responsible, I think is also to get you 100% involved in this process, because there may be something that you cannot control, but you can work with the energy and work with the process so that, if in any case, you become free. You can't do that when you're not 100% into it. And to do that, you, it's helpful to think that you're 100% responsible. So I hope that makes sense. This kind of trips people up, um, especially people that uh, have been had the experience of people, um, let's say, abusing them or have had traumas and things like that. So. Um, I want to kind of try to explain it that way. Um, so there's no judgment, there's no blame uh, when we say that we're 100% responsible for things. Um, it is just so that we can work in it. So um, it might be the case that you say I'm 100% responsible for 
um, my experiences with this person. So maybe this person who um, got aligned with us and um, we can um, work, we work basically through ourselves, through saying certain statements. And by saying the statements, we relieve the toxic energies, the pressure, and in turn, it actually affects other people. Uh, Dr. Uh, Yu Lin, the person that I mentioned, um, he actually worked for, I believe, a year in a Hawaiian psychiatric hospital for the criminally insane. And as the story goes, he came in as a psychologist and he did not actually see clients. He went through their charts, he read them, he tuned in to their, uh, through them, through their cases, and they said the four statements. The four, I guess you can think of them also as, um, uh, you know, advanced mantras, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, and by doing this over a period of time, he started to gradually see certain things. One is that there was less behavior problems. Um, people um, were, there were less people um, being admitted. There were also, uh, over a period of time, the staff's morale went up. Uh, it was just a, a whole number of things, and without any type of really overt changes to their social services system. So that, according to him, this is the only variable that changed was them. I'm um, asking him to come in, come in, and start to do his his work, um, and that's how uh, he credits the story of his style of ho'opono going and. Um, changing things, helping, and what he does is he goes inside himself because if we believe that we are connected to um, everyone and everything, then the vibration of whatever's coming through us, to us, from other people, we can work on that vibration and change it, and then thus affecting the system. So that is the background uh, of that. So you might say, okay, so what are the four statements that are so powerful in cleansing. Um, there are nothing too surprising. You will find these statements in other forms of spirituality and Buddhism, Christianity. Um, the first one is, um, I love you. Two, I'm sorry. Three, uh, please forgive me. And four, I thank you. So you still find those statements of um, repentance, forgiveness, in the original Ho'opono, but um, you're saying them within yourself. Now, we're getting back to, again, the mundane, the psychological versus the metaphysical and the spiritual. You might say, well, what, what the hell do I have to feel sorry for? Um, you know, what do I have to ask for forgiveness for? So, uh, to help you with that, it's more important that you say it and that you get maybe a little bit of a feeling, just a little bit, to direct, to direct things, to let everything flow and direct your attention. So, um, I love you, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'm sorry, if you've ever fell short of your own expectations, that would be something to work with if this trips you up. Uh, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Anytime you're sorry, then you try to maybe ask for forgiveness. And then, f then the last one, I thank you, which is gratitude. So you're saying this through you, and you could say it, um, most people say that it's towards the divine, um, because if you're doing this, a lot of times you don't really, you're not taking, you're not blaming yourself for anything again, like I mentioned, but you are trying to take responsibility for what shows up in your experience. Even though in the back of your mind you may know I had no direct cause with that. That's okay. You set that aside. It's not important. Uh, it's more important that you go within, you work with whatever comes to your experience because you're all connected. And by working with that, you can um, release that energy, let the divine come in, and you will transform yourself and others. So when, when you have that, when you have those four phrases, you say that within yourself. 
So when would you actually do this? So my, f my f suggestion would be is that any time that you have a troubling thought, a feeling that you don't like, immediately turn your attention to that and go through the four phrases. I wouldn't go through them like real fast. I would, especially in the beginning, go through them pretty slow. And as you direct your attention to that, keep working on it. Uh, it may take some repetitions, working with whatever thought that comes to your mind that's, let's say, unevolved, um, a feeling that you don't quite like, um, that sort of thing. Also, you know, where I was talking about, if you, if you uh, as far as the I'm sorry, if you've ever um, did something that was against your values, that might be something if you needed a hook for that. Uh, but in general, you know, try to do it as far as just saying, I'm sorry. It's not necessary to have the specific reason. So, uh, thoughts or feelings that come to mind, keep working on that. Now, it may be the case that you have it, this thought and feeling here, and you just start to chop the top off, and you still have other layers. So you keep working on it, and you keep doing it. And by doing it repeatedly and in a mindful way and just focusing on it, that you will find, at least from my experience of doing it, is that you will feel like a release, like a like a the re a release of negative negative energy, and it will raise your own vibration up, and it you know you will be in a better place. Now, how does this all relate <laughs> to the occult and the paranormal? Uh, because this is useful, this is healing, and this is certainly appropriate for this channel because I've talked about Reiki, I've talked about the Violet Flame. Um, so this is more than <laughs> par for the course. Uh, this, by clearing out a lot of these energies that are within you, for example, you will find yourself, at least in my mind, to be more sensitive. You may be more uh, easily to detect energies. Uh, it will, um, Dr. Yu Lin, when he got involved with this, he was able to actually see spirits easier. He was able to um, detect <laughs> portals in other dimensions and things like that. So don't be surprised as, have a, as a side effect of this, it may not be a direct route to this, that these sorts of occurrences happen. Um, I've had two really unusual occurrences happened a couple weeks after starting this um, and they would be more like what you would describe as not necessarily paranormal but really unusual people complimenting me on, on something that was not very uh, outstanding outstanding um, I've had uh, people go out of my way like people who would I wouldn't even consider close buying me lunch out of the blue um, and I, I attribute that to just changing, um, I guess, my energy. I think I'm sure it probably affects my energy field. So, um, that's what I would do. I would, I would work on the thoughts and feelings um, to become more clear. And as a result, I wouldn't be surprised if, if paranormal occurrences and it increases your psychic abilities. So please subscribe and like. Um, again, I'm going to put the second half of, of this video if you want to learn more applications, other uses for this. I will uh, put that in my Patreon, put a link at the bottom, and um, people in my inner circle will have access to that. If you are not part of that, you can certainly um, sign up and support the channel and you'll have access to that. And by the way, um, I'm not trying to, to hide anything. Um, if you've never been to my Patreon, there are there are quite a few of my most, most popular videos, the second parts on there that you would be able to to have. So and watch. So anyway, I uh, hope you all have a good weekend, and I will see you in a future video. Thanks so much.